Hello everyone, what's going on? I'm Gaff the Master 974 back again today. Welcome to another Source Shorts video. And today I've got a suggestion, kind of, sort of, from Desting254, who wants to know how you can go about adding a little bit of variety to the Metro Cop enemies in Half Life 2. So I'm just going to quickly go over how you can do something like this within the code for Source 2013 mod. Now you want to go to the server and source files hl2dll and go down to npc metropolis.cpp and you want to find the spawn function and uh, it would be helpful to do colon colon spawn as well so you actually find the uh, correct function but uh, if you scroll down a little bit so as you can see here you can modify the m underscore i health variable with something like a convar as you can see here and you can modify the value or do whatever you want and something that they wanted to know is about changing skins now the thing is the metro cops don't actually have unique skins it's just little, it's just like one skin basically but um, if you take a look at something like the antlion code, which you might not know this, but the antlions actually do have different skins in Half-Life 2. And so you could do something like this where you essentially say M underscore N skin is a random, random int between 0 and the total number of skins minus 1. So in this case for the antlions, there's 4 skins. So it will create a random number between 0 and 3. Um, so if you wanted to, not that I'm going to go into this, but you could do the same sort of thing for the Metro Cops, just add different skins, different materials to the Metro Cops and then, you know, do this line to essentially randomize the skin when the Metro Police spawn to give a bit of variety to them. Now, the thing that I'm going to be doing for this video, the main reason why I wanted to actually make this is because of what I'm going to be doing with the flash grenade source shorts video when I get to adding the code to the GitHub because I'm going to be adding that as its own weapon. If you remember from that video, I just modified the grenade code, the grenade frag file, but I'm going to actually make it its own independent file and some of the things I'm going to be doing there is what I'm going to be doing here. So I'll just give you a brief sort of outline of what you could do if you wanted to extend the metro cop functionality to get the metro police enemies to do something different so you want to add a new item and it doesn't really matter where it goes you can add it to the hl2 filter if you really want to and you can call it whatever you want to so i'm just gonna call it something like npc metro police elite something like that and so there's going to be some mandatory include files. Um, you always need to have cbase.h and you can also add tier 0 memdbgone.h. Um, but in the middle, you want to add hashtag include of npc metropolice.h. And then when you get down to defining a class, you can call it whatever you want to. So I'm going to call it something like cnpc metro police elite and then do a colon and then you get to the base class and we're going to make this a cnpc metro police so this is our new class and this is the base class now we can go to npc metro police dot h because that's going to outline some of the functions that we're going to be inheriting for example we're going to be inheriting the constructor and create components classify pretty much everything it's just this public section is stuff that we would have easy access to override and especially these virtual functions as well but when you get down to protected and private stuff then it's not so easy to go ahead and change that um, as would be evidenced with modifying the grenade code. I had to make a couple of changes just to make sure that you end up, uh, for example, inheriting the constructor or destructor. But as you can see, we do a declare class up here. So I might as well add that in a public section. Do a declare class of the uh, new class and the base class. Then add void. Cache. 
and also void spawn and any other functions if you want to uh, but then you would go down here you would need to link entity to class something like i don't know npc metro police elite as a cnpc metro police elite and then you can go into something like the pre-cache function and then call upon base class pre-cache and then if you had a different model that you wanted to use in particular then you would just go ahead and pre-cache the model you know just pre-cache the model name or um if there's any other things that you would want um then you can just go ahead and i don't know add that into here if you wanted to i was supposed to say molotov but um not that that exists mind you but i'm just saying this for example sake so if there's any custom materials models sounds or other entities that the new enemy is going to be using then you just extend that to the pre-cache function and then finally the last thing i'm going to do is just go to the spawn function and you can pretty much do base class spawn really screwing this up tonight but um then you can do something like i m underscore i health equals whatever you want some random value and then maybe change the skin as well just Again, you can copy the line from the ant line code, which is just this. Um, that, that's if you have different skins, of course. So we can just, you know, understand that we had four skins for the uh, ant lines in total. But yeah, that's pretty much how you can do it. And if we were to, for example, save and compile the code, then none of this is going to show up with errors, at least in the compilation stage. It will have an error because of the model and of course you need to set the model for the entity to be whatever the model was that you specified in the uh, pre-cache function. So for example you could change this to be one of the combine soldier models however I find that through testing that doesn't work because it's using like the same animation data from the metro copper enemies. And because there's no similarities, it just sort of causes the, you know, soldier to stand still and not do anything. But when they die, they die like the Metro Police die and not like how the Combine Soldiers die. But as you can see from down here, the 10 succeeded, 0 failed. It means that this works. So in case you wanted to extend the Metro Cop functionality, but not clog up the code, then you could do something like this to make a separate class and make the main code a base class and then extend the functionality in a new file if that makes sense i don't know how to you know title this video how i'm going to work it necessarily but yeah i wanted to do this video as a kind of minor follow-up to the previous flash grenade tutorial because this is going to be what i'm going to be using when I upload that flash grenade code to the GitHub, you'd see for the, you know, flash grenade, it's going to derive from grenade frag. And then the weapon flash grenade is going to derive from weapon frag. And you'll see exactly what I mean when that code gets updated or added to the GitHub, whenever that's going to be. But um, yeah, let me know what you think about this. If there's anything that I forgot to mention. But um, yeah, let me know and take care out there. Peace out. See you later. Have a great day and uh, hope to see you again soon for another video. Let me know what you think.